ruthless dictator with no tolerance for dissent, or a puppet hell-bent on protecting white interests, or the leader that South Africa needs? Who exactly is Herman Mashaba and his action essay? And where does he fit into South African politics? A successful businessman turned politician, to everyone's surprise, went on to build a party which campaigned and made good, showing and garnering influence in some of South Africa's most powerful local municipalities. Is Herman Mashaba his party's own worst enemy? Let's take a look at this insert as we give some context on our conversation tonight. I cannot reconcile myself with a group of people who believe that race is relevant in the discussion of inequality and poverty in South Africa in 2019. I cannot reconcile myself with people who do not see that South Africa is more unequal today than it was in 1994. Calling it a day, just three years after assuming the mayorship of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba pulled no punches, accusing his then party, the Democratic Alliance, of arrogance in how it dealt with Johannesburg municipal coalition partners and failing to appreciate the apartheid legacy of racial inequalities in South Africa. <laughs> Ironically, together with other black leaders in the Democratic Alliance, he was recruited as part of the party's counter-strategy against allegations of being a white party still locked in the past. Twelve months before the 2021 local government elections, Mashaba launched Action Essay, a self-confessed liberal who believes in the free market where the state has little to no intervention in the economy. Mashaba pulled a surprise when his party became the sixth largest in the country, despite contesting in six municipalities. Oh, my people, I love you all. And let me tell you today, don't allow them to lie. If something is new, it doesn't mean it is small. Action SA is not small. Action SA is a home for all South Africans. But soon after the elections, cracks started showing when there was Renatal leader butted heads with the party over coalition partners in the province and was booted out. Emel Mashaba is misleading this country. We would like Soweto to know and South Africa wide to know that Action SA is not what it presents itself to be. Where to from here? If Mashaba does not correct this, we will collapse Action SA. A number of protests followed with members accusing Mashaba of sidelining hardworking ordinary members when allocating party positions. Many of them were fired. As member after member was either fired or resigned, allegations of racism and elitism in the party emerged, with Mashaba being accused of being controlled by white people who are said to be the real power behind Action SA. Very importantly is the discussion around political parties that people felt we should or shouldn't work with. Having played a crucial role in coalition politics across the country and as the battle for the control of South Africa simmers towards the 2024 elections, Action SA's role will even be more crucial in ultimately determining where and how political power shifts in national politics. However, its internal dynamics and public suspicion as another white control party with Mashaba as a dictator who is intolerant of dissent threatens to reverse its fortunes as a party that surprised all but soon fell into the age-old politics of race and intolerance. Welcome back and we are going to take a short break. Please stay tuned. And after the break, we'll get into our conversation with leaders from Action SA. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Unfiltered. I'm Siswe Mpofu Walsh. And as mentioned earlier, we're looking into the politics of Action SA this week, a leading opposition political party in our country. And we're going to be speaking to two Axed Action SA leaders about the climate of dissent in the party and whether there is a crackdown from senior leadership on that dissent. 
Many leaders have left Action SA in recent months and we're going to inquire as to why that's the case. Now, unfortunately, we had Mr. Herman Mashaba, who is going to participate in this conversation, but upon hearing that other former leaders from Action SA would be present, he declined to participate. We are joined, and let me welcome my guests, by Ngele Molapo Dao, um, an axed uh, councillor from Action SA, and Bongani Kaluza from the KZN leadership, also someone who's left Action SA. Um, please may I welcome you both. Thank you very much for joining us and, and being available for this. Thank you so much for having us, um, CISO, and good evening to the viewers at home. Absolutely. What's, what's your reaction to uh, Mr. Mashaba refusing to, to share a platform with you, at least for the opening part of this interview? Uh, you know, I, I kind of expected it um, because he knows what he's done. Um, he, he just couldn't, you know, come here and look me in the eye, you know, when we, we discuss um, the things that he's done. Um, I've obviously taken um, the issue of my termination, um, termination of my membership rather, to um, um, a, a review. Um, so we're going to court on the 6th of June. So there's going to be a lot of things that I won't be able to say in the interview. But yeah, I, I would have loved to have him here. He's chickened out. I'm so disappointed in him. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Taluza, your view on, on, on hearing that? Thank you, thank you very much, Cesar. Good evening and good evening to the viewers at home. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's so unfortunate that Mr. Mashaba is not here. <laughs> um, but I knew as well uh, uh, that he, he won't come. He, he won't come. But um, we are here now. Um, we are ready to, to, to cooperate and to work with you and to share everything with, with the, um, uh, the viewers at home. Thank you very much. No, absolutely. Uh, many leaders have left Action SA, uh, from Bongani Baloi to Makosi Koza. You too also represent a group of leaders who have left the party. It seems like a growing number of people have left the party. When you say what happened to me, what do you mean? Um, and I want to add, I'm going, I'm going to respond, but I just want to add to say more people are going to be leaving Action SA because more people are discovering Action SA um, that it's not what everyone thought it was. Um, so to answer your question, what happened to me is that my membership was terminated. Uh, there was no process. I was not taken to any hearing. Um, and the reasons for the termination of my membership, at least those um, um, the reasons that were communicated officially to me in the letter that was sent to myself by Mr. Alistair Shaw, um, who is a chairperson for Ethics and Disciplinary um, Committee in the Action SA, um, or that I expressed a dying love for a former member, someone that they fired, and just to be clear, is that is that your partner, Mr. Dow, yes. Mr. Abel Dow? Yes, uh, that they fired, and obviously because they fired, uh, you know, uh, even the reasons for um, his expulsion, uh, like they're so disappointing. Um, so he decided to take that matter to court. And because he served papers on the party, I mean, they, they're repeating the fact that he's taking the party to court in the termination of my membership. They're actually saying they are firing me because I said yes to his marriage proposal. And um, this is the man that is taking action SA to court. In the interest of fairness, don't you think because Mr. Dow was placed in a, an invidious position having also had his membership terminated on allegations of, I think, sexual harassment. Um, did you not think that the party had a point, that that was um, something that would maybe bring the party into disrepute? The key word here is allegations. Allegations um, must be tested and they must be proven to be true before you can say um, anyone is guilty of anything or punish them um, for, for any of those things. The, the, the good thing to do here was to at least suspend him 
suspend him until um, the, the, the matter has run its course and they are sure that he is guilty. And while we're still on the issue of um, the, the allegations, he's going to speak for himself um, at some point. There's going to be um, articles coming out very soon. But um, yeah, Mashaba and his people are going to be very disappointed to learn that this, that case was, was um, non-existent to begin with. You know, do, do you feel like this was a kind of attempt to be to make you guilty by association? I know you maintain Mr. Dow's innocence as well, but to try and portray you as somehow guilty because you were somehow related to him. Yeah, you should see um, some of the things they're saying in that letter. They're so absurd. Uh, you know, saying that I would leak information from um, Action SA to his party because he started a new party. Um, but we have, you know, um, members of Action SA that are married or some dating members of other parties. I mean, I will not mention people who have not come out um, with their relationships, but we can talk about Brutas Malada and Mpopaladze, the DA's um, caucus leader in Joburg, the former mayor. They are married. Um, Brutus Malada is a prominent member of Action SA, very high up in the structures of the party. And Mpopalaz is the mayor, former mayor of um, Joburg, very prominent. Um, and these are now husband and wife. And it's not an issue. And there's many others, like I said, there's many others. Um, a senior member of the DA in parliament um, is dating a member of Action SA who was, you know, um, in a very strategic um, position in the city of Joburg. And like I said, I won't mention their name because honestly I don't want to drag them into this um, um, this mess but it is so unfair why would you think that I um, would um, leak the information and by the way Cizwe I joined Action SA um, because Herman Mashaba called me in February 2020 and asked me to come and be um, the Gauteng media manager um, and it was in February um, he offered me the job with um, Bafanam Timkul right next to him. And then immediately after that, um, I got a call from Michael Beaumont um, um, crystallizing the offer. And that's how I joined Action SA. Um, and the reason they called me, the two of them, and spoke to me about a job in Action SA is because I worked with Emin Mashaba. I was part of Emin Mashaba's mayoral campaign in 2015-2016 for the Jobek uh, mayoralty. And this is the man that when I finally joined Action SA, went to Twitter and spoke about how excited he was that I'm joining um, Action SA and I'm going to help them with media and comms and he knows the work that I do because he knows the work that I did for him. You know, um, today when I was preparing myself for this interview, I shared a graphic um, from the SABC that announces my um, interview here. And there's one journalist that came to me and said, listen, we know what you did. It is very sad what Heman did to you because honestly, you built this man's profile. And I did. I did. I, when when the, the, the campaign teams were put together in 2015, I remember um, I wanted to work in Tony because I'm from Tony and I couldn't get Tony because someone else wanted Tony and I was given Joburg. Like nobody wanted to work with Herman because they felt he was difficult, he was, you know, bossy, and, and we were there, you know, we, we, we made that um, campaign work. There's so many people that we worked with that are not part of the mess that I will not be bringing into this, but they can come and attest um, the work that we, we did. And we are going to delve into some of these allegations that you make about Action SA and the climate of intimidation in some ways within the party. But can I just ask, also, for the record, did you leak sensitive information um, relating to the party? No, I haven't. Um, and even in their, in their um, communication to me, they're not saying I've leaked anything. They're not. They are firing me because I have expressed an undying love. That is, what, that is the reason that I have. If they are saying something else, they did not communicate it to me. They are saying it as um, the, the, them trying to spin um, the mess that they've created. So I, I haven't, um, you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't even know what to say. It's an insult. It's, it's an insult because I've worked with, with these two gentlemen um, and they know me. 
they know me even long before they know the men um, I'm seeing, the men I'm married to. They know me, you know, as a person, as my own person outside of that relationship. And for them to want to reduce me to that relationship because I, I fell in love and I accepted the marriage proposal. I mean, that is absurd. I, I don't even know how to, to describe that. Many people have commented, for example, Bongani Baloi recently on the leadership style, the way that the party is centered around the image of one person. Is that true? Can you take us into whether the party does have a true democracy or is it ruled with an iron fist, as some have, as some have suggested, from the top, from Mr. Mashaba? Okay, so I will tell you my experience, Cizwe. So, I was in Action SA, I was a councillor in the city of Tswane, um, on the Action SA ticket, obviously, but I was also a member of the REC. REC is the Regional Executive Committee. I was sitting in that committee because I was a media liaison for the region, a spokesperson for the region. And in that group, um, we had a lady by the name of Nancy Mashaba, Nancy Mashaba is Hemen Mashaba's younger sister. She told me in a group messages that can be proven because they were, you know, it's texts in a WhatsApp group. And she told me that my days in Action SA were numbered because his brother, um, I fell in, I've fallen out of favor with his brother. Now, if a man can decide that he doesn't like a person anymore and therefore they must be fired. Maybe it is true then that he's a dictator. Maybe it is true that he's a dictator because how does he then decide by himself that he doesn't want so and so and that there must be a process um, that um, is like a, a box ticking exercise to make things look like, you know, um, the, uh, uh, you know there's this, this constitution that is um, being applied and this law and this process that's being followed when we know that a decision has been taken. I mean, I was told I was told by um, his younger brother, his younger sister, like I said, Nancy Mashaba. But before Nancy Mashaba, I was actually told by his driver that he is denying right now that he's a driver. And he's a driver that been because I have been with them in the car. To what, a number what's of going on with, with this driver? Because um, Bongani Baloi in his press conference made reference to this driver who seems to wield power and, and sometimes threaten people. What's going on there in, in your estimation? Listen, I, I, I submitted uh, an affidavit, I disposed of an affidavit to the party um, about this very same guy, um, driver. His name is Bafana Mtinkulu and I, I can call him by name because I can prove things that I'm saying. This is um, the man who in August told me that I needed to um, 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 separate from my partner um, and try and distance myself from him because he was on his way out and as soon as he's um, out everyone that is um, associated with him will be targeted. So I knew that um, the 12th of March was coming, that is the day um, where I was fired. I just didn't know that it was going to be on the 12th of March but I knew that the day was coming because I was told by his driver and his younger sister, him and Mashaba's younger sister. Thank you for sharing those insights. We're going to bring Mr. Kalaza in for the KZN perspective and to see whether he agrees or disagrees with some of the things you've said about the internal climate in the party. We'll also get some insights from our political analyst who will be joining us later, Sandy Leswana. But we must go to a break. We'll be back straight after that with more from this conversation. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Unfiltered. I'm Sizwe Mpofu Walsh. We're discussing Action SA, the climate of dissent within the party. Many leaders who joined have left while the party continues to try and contest power in many municipalities, but also in the country next year where we have a watershed election coming up. We've been speaking to Tswane Councillor Ngele Mulapotao, and also we are now going to be speaking to Axed KZN provincial uh, leader, uh, Mr. Bongani Kalaza. We're going to be hearing what it's been like deciding to leave Action SA. And we're also then going to speak to political analyst uh, Sandile Swana, who will be 
analyzing some of these questions for us. We did invite Mr. Mashaba, who we believed would be more than willing to join the show, but when he heard that other voices would be available, he declined to attend. And we hope that he will come back if, if, if he wants to at some point. But Mr. Kalaza, you've heard some of the experiences from Tswane, councillors being told to leave the party. Tell us about your experiences and do they mirror what we heard in terms of the Tswane situation? What's KZN been like? Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, number one, let us be realistic. Let us be honest with ourselves. Action SA is not a political party, but Action SA is a private company. That that how they are, but they are discussing, they are disguising as if they are a political party. All right. And the, the media, yes, South Africa have created a monster with um, um, this uh, Mr. Mashaba because now he thinks he, own, he owns everything and he owns everyone. He's in charge of South Africa. Right now, we are waiting for him here. We were supposed to meet here and discuss issues, not tissues. But he decided not to come because he wanted to come later and nullify everything. So I'm begging you and I'm pleading with you. If Mashaba decides to come, please invite us because we need Mashaba and we must discuss issues and we must be honest. He, he always preach about ethical leadership. Something that we never saw from, from, from Mr. Mashab. See, so, a party without a plan is a party without a direction. I decided to leave Action SA because they are misleading everyone. That's number one. What okay. evidence do you have for that, Mr. Toluza? What, what specific things happened that caused you to leave? Because some might say, well, since you've started a new venture, you always had this in mind, or maybe you were you were planted to to break Action SA from the inside. So, so, so how, how could you prove those who think that wrong? Okay, I'm glad because people used to say, now you are busy criticizing um, a, a, your your former political party because you are now outside. You understand. I'm glad because I fought this oppression. I fought, I fought uh, this racism within the Action SA while I was still there as a provincial secretary. And that is why I have I, I, I decided to call a press conference uh, uh, last year, last year, uh, October, to share evidence. I was having a projector there, there sharing screenshots. Um, of, our, of our conversation as the PEC of KZN discussing these issues with Michael Bowman, the chairperson of Action SA, telling him the racism will will destroy um, this organization. Gossips will destroy this organization. This uh, this leader, um, uh, Mr. Mashaba, uh, he is very chaotic. We all know that. We can just try everything. He tries everything he, everywhere. Mashaba um, uh, will create chaos. Uh, now he's collapsing a uh, collision, and I spoke about that uh, on, on, during my, my, my press briefing. Can, and can, last we, year take, October, can we take this one by one, Mr. Taluza, because you've already said quite a lot. Let's, let's focus in on this allegation of, of racism. What evidence do you have that there was racism involved in the party structures? How did you feel that you were a victim of racism within Action SA? Okay, number one, it started with, with Dr. Makosi Kos during LGEs. Let us talk about posters, election posters. There were, there were posters that were having two people, Makosi and the mayoral candidate. If the mayoral candidate is an Indian guy, I, I even shared, I can even share those um, a, 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 a posters with you. If um, there is a U -U -U Makosi and there is an Indian guy, uh, those associate friends of Mr. Mashaba will just put uh, something to hide Dr. Makos Koza and only leave 
uh, and, and, and Indian car. I'm not a racist, I'm not against uh, uh, Indian communities or, 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 or white community, but let us be honest. And Mashaba failed dismally to address that issue. When it comes to PEC, let, let, let me make an example. There were, there were floods uh, here in KZN uh, 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 during April, uh, uh, April last year. Um, if you can ask Mr. Mr. Mashab, if he visited any township dominated by black community, he didn't visit any, but instead he went to Palito to sweep the street there in Palito. And Mr. Mashaba will go and visit um, if I, I was a provincial secretary, but he will go and visit um, those um, a certain individuals, um, like Indians and whoever, and even if he's having meetings, he won't involve black people. If he's having gathered dinners or fundraising dinners, he will go with people not serving even, even within the PEC, because all black people are just nothing uh, uh, in front of Mashaba. What about just what about them. the black leaders who are still part of the party? Gauteng, actually, your province still. This is a party which still holds a number of black leaders. Are they confused, or why why do they still stick around? Come again, my brother. I say the party already has and still retains many black leaders besides Mr. Mashaba in your province, to name one, but also in Gauteng. Why are those okay. leaders still present in the party if what you say is, is true? Let, let me be honest. Here in case that, and if you can check from our PEC, um, those individuals are new individuals coming from GA, came with Zwagele. We are only having maybe two former provincial regional chairperson. All eight regional chairperson left the organization because of the racism. The, what, you, what you see here in case of, and let me talk about the case of, it's something totally and completely new. And let me make an example. Um, Mashaba started this organization with prominent leaders. If we can check, LTE is mayoral candidates. All black individuals, those who were mayoral candidates, they, all, they are all uh, uh, left. I can talk about Dr. Makosi Koza. He was a mayoral candidate in Tewin, Tohi, in Egurulin, Tau, in Etuan. So they all left. But who is who is there from those mayoral candidates who were, who were uh, at the forefront? Only two business um, uh, uh, business people from the Indian community because this organization is just a it just a business entity. It's it, it all about political influence from 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 Mashaba. I, I spoke about this thing while I was still there. I'm I still maintain and I I I, I, I told everyone that. People will leave the organization one by one because you are being led by a very arrogant some, 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 someone who right. doesn't respect anyone. Okay. Who, no, Will, and we'll, we'll come back on some of the other allegations that you've made because we just focused for now on racism, but you did say some other things about uh, a climate where there's no dissent allowed. We'll come back to that. But, Mr. Swana, you've heard some of the dissenting voices that we don't get through the mainstream channels of Action SA. We often hear from the chairperson or, or the, the leader of the party through the official line. And often these voices, maybe we see them once or twice in the media and then uh, they aren't given as much oxygen as, as the party itself. How do you analyze what's going on inside Action SA right now and the seeming exodus may be too strong a word, but but the departure of many black leaders from the party and what that signals for its, its status in South African politics. Thank you, Sizwe, and your viewers. Uh, you know, the, the, the place where uh, 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 um, Action SA finds itself in the first place, you know, it, it's a place that would indeed even attract business people, if you like, because 
Unfortunately, uh, 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 what has happened with the incompetence in governing South Africa that has happened, uh, especially the past 15 years or so, simple things not being done, has meant that people who are managers in the main, uh, uh, managers come up forward and say that, no, I think I can do this. I can get water pumped and, and distributed. You know, it's about doing, not necessarily even about thinking and philosophizing about South Africa. So that's the first problem. The problem would be then, uh, if the question is, uh, Action SA is not a political party, but a business. To me, what it means is that there is no coherent philosophy, political philosophy, that then guides what happens there. I was listening tonight, actually, to a, 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 a video by Mashabo, uh, where he says that him and Gaten McKenzie are in the same industry, which is the political industry. Uh, he grew up in industry, Mr. Mashabo. He grew up as a business owner. So when he is in the party, uh, and I've said this, that some of these parties appear to me to have owners. Probably Action SA is taking uh, the same route. It was, these are these, some of these cases that have been discussed here, yeah, I've heard about them, but the latest, I may be mistaken, but the latest that I picked up was that one of Bongani Baloy, whom I thought was a very, very good catch for uh, Action SA. But in a very short space of time, brilliant guy like that is gone. Uh, so what is happening is that even the hope that would have said for maybe in the longest of time, we are now going to see a formal organization of black liberals. And, and black liberals are not common. I mean, uh, many people didn't even realize that uh, Lima, Professor Limal School was a liberal. Uh, so it would have been intellectually and from a political philosophy point of view, a, a beautiful way forward for us to see what this, what this thing is about and that there's no movement there. So all that it is now is just opportunism and aligning. Uh, it's a different form of the politics of the stomach where those who have money, you know, I was listening to uh, Stiglitz, Professor Stiglitz recently, and he says that, you know, in the USA, it's not a one person, one vote, you know. It's, 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 it's the votes are now translated into dollars, you know. It's the most dollars that win the, the election. So Action SA is now caught up in a different version of the politics of the stomachs. The people who come with money, which will naturally, if you like, be the whites who own the largest amount of wealth in South Africa, when you talk about wealth inequality, and then followed by the Indians, the, the so-called colored communities and, and the Africans are nowhere in the stakes of money. So the way you design your political party cannot be a way that is expensive and unaffordable for the Africans because then they, they are role there is meaningless. And yet Africans are still running very successful organizations such as the ZCC, for instance, the Zion Christian Church and others on a basis that is dignified and affordable to them. But political parties of South Africa such as Action SA, even the ANC and others, are designed by from the origin so that they are funded by uh, 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 big business and tycoons, not by ordinary masses. Right, so those I want are to come back to that, uh, Mr. Swana. Mr. Swana will, so, sorry, we're going to come back to that because I want to focus on this question, uh, question of donor funding um, as we come back because I think it's a, a wider question that I'd like to ask about the influence on Action SA and, and who pays the piper, as it were. Um, but before we do that, we're just going to cut to a quick break and we'll be back with this discussion on Action SA after that. Welcome back to Unfiltered. I'm Cizu Mpofu Walsh and we're talking Action SA tonight. We just departed before the break on the note of donor funding. Now, after 2021, parties were compelled to reveal their funding from donors over 100,000 rands. And Action SA paints an interesting picture. Uh, Mr. Swana, you were talking about the importance of donor funding and how that can sometimes determine the agenda of a party. 
And I was looking through some of the um, filings made by Action SA and noticing um, Rebecca Oppenheimer, uh, Jessica Slack, Victoria Frudenheim, these are uh, granddaughters from the famous Oppenheimer family who disclosed their funding to the party, several other uh, prominent business people. Um, is, is the world of donors determining political direction more than the voice of citizens? And is Action SA a case in point there uh, to, your earlier, to your earlier interventions? And I'll also ask some of the panelists whether they felt there was pressure from donors because this has been something that's been repeatedly raised by people who've left Action SA. But Mr. Swana, since we unceremoniously cut you off before the break, let me put that question to you first. Thank you. Thank you, Sizwe. Sizwe, I think it is already an open secret. Uh, where Stiglitz would say there is one person, one vote that is being replaced by one, uh, 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 one person, one dollar, something like that. Basically, what is happening is that uh, one person, let's say, 10 million US dollars or 10 million rents. So a person who owns a large company and, and a large sums of wealth like Oppenheimer can bring uh, money that maybe it would be difficult even for the whole of Soweto to raise. Uh, and in that bringing that money into the political party, let's say, for instance, Action SA, also whisper ideas politely into the minds of the leaders uh, about what is good to do and what is good to live alone. Uh, in a nation where uh, inequality has been worsening in all its forms in South Africa, and inequality, to my mind, is another form of apartheid, so, and we have seen it worsening, and we've seen these billionaires donating money to political parties and politicians, and these politicians have been worsening inequality. So, to me, Action SA cannot uh, uh, pursue those programs that would have been able to transform Soweto and all the black townships and the villages into competitive, world-class living or habitats of humanity and so on and so forth. So to me, the politics of South Africa, it doesn't matter whether it's the ANC uh, or the DA for that matter, and the Action SA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are politics of the stomach. And it is how these institutions that are called political parties are designed that are excluding the most financially deprived persons in South Africa. Let's put, let's put, some of those questions to those who've actually seen within Action SA as a party. Ms. Mulapotao, would you say that you've seen firsthand the hand of donors on the party? Bongani Baloi recently said part of the reason he left was because party decisions were being influenced by donors. Is there any truth to that? And do you have any evidence in your own experience for that? And I'll put the same question to you as well, Mr. Kaluza. So when you started the show, you, you opened uh, the show with a clip. And in that clip, the first um, few minutes was um, Amin Mashaba's resignation as the mayor of Joburg. And in that speech that he delivered when he was resigning, he mentioned how racist the DA was because they did not deliver um, services to black communities and all of that. Now, this is the man who, when we speak about the the the, the parties that failed municipalities. I'm going to speak about Twani. In Twani, um, the DA has been in government since 2016. So if you are going to talk about things that are wrong in Twani, you cannot um, remove the DA from, from, from the mess. If you are going to talk about everything that is wrong with um, service delivery in Twani, even now, um, the Demning Ages report, you cannot um, absolve the DA of any wrongdoing. Now, this is the man um, who would, um, you know, go everywhere and say um, people must support the DA um, instead of the ANC because uh, yeah, he's got his own personal issues with the ANC. He knows what happened. Um, between him and ANC personally in their um, deals and whatever. Do you, think, do you think it was donors um, saying that he should be soft on the DA because they're kind of funded by the same people? 
if you look at, uh, um, and I'm glad uh, we have we've got that um, um, the, the uh, political party um, a funding bill that you know, compels parties to make public um, who the funders are. Um, if you look at them, you'll find that there's um, quite two or three um, 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 funders that are funding both Action SA and DA. Now, one thing about people who fund political parties is that they will not fund parties that are going to work against each other. They will not. They find parties that they know are going to work together. And chances are, um, one of the, the conditions of um, that funding to Action SA was that it works with the DA. Because how do you explain Action SA working with the DA in 20? How? Because the mess that's in 20 is, is DA's fault. Everything that is wrong with 20, you cannot say it's not DA's fault. When the DA came into 20, um, the DA ANC is corrupt, yes. ANC has failed black communities, yes. But the DA is no better. In fact, Tony is now worse off under the DA. And Heman Mashaba is saying, Action SA must vote for a DA mayor in Tony. How are you, uh, how does it make sense? So it can, it can only be an influence from um, the donors that are obviously funding both the DA and Action SA, which are public. I mean, I don't have to, you know, um, um, cast aspersions and, and, you know, thumbs up things that are not in black and white. You have that um, report with you there. Mr. Taluza, um, do you echo those sentiments? Have you seen the influence of donors on the party from your perspective in KZN? Yes, sir. There is an influence. Let me let me motivate my statement. Okay, but let, let us let us be honest. Mashaba is not being influenced by donors, but everything that is happening and that is doing within Action SA is part of um, the business plan because the Action SA is being run uh, through a business plan. Understand. So Mashaba cannot deviate from a, a business plan. That is why, if there is, if if you see, you are not. That is why that one falls under under racism as well. Because as black people, we sing when when we are hurt and we sing when we are happy. Once you sing, you are in EFF or in ANC. Once you dance, you are in EFF and you are in O and ANC. They will run. They will run. John Mood will run and call for a Zoom meeting. No, guys, we mustn't. We mustn't uh, uh, sing here. There is no time for sing. But you, you, you are wondering. But we, we, are, we are having time for what? Because there is no plan. There is no program. We are being. We are being operating without uh, even job uh, job description. Uh, so you can feel that okay. There is someone who's pushing or who's fighting behind. No, we cannot just do that. The only thing that Mashaba is being sponsored to erase the history or yes, track of a black person. The action SA is only there. That is why I keep on saying it is very dangerous for for for, for, for this democracy because everything related to his track. It must be erased. That's what we are taught. That 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 is why I fought this thing. And I said, no, you cannot just take away my identity. You cannot just tell me I cannot sing. I cannot say viva. I cannot do whatever. Because it's not part of the corruption. If let us work, let us implement programs, let us deal with serious issues that are affecting people from on the ground. Why we are busy discussing who must sing, how we must sing, stuff like that. It's they are being influenced, and the problem we are being we were being led by someone who's not politically orientated you cannot just take someone with two-year experience uh, with local government and we expect that particular person to lead a party that can unseat the ANC what's that but because this thing it's all about I'm a business ambition and the political influence Mashaba is trying shame but right now he lost control he's confused he don't know what to do it's a shame but so one of the things that interests me when I look at the policy platform of Action SA, and Mr. Swana, let me bring you in here, but then also seek the, the inputs of our guests, is that there seems to be a certain degree linked to this donor pressure question of toing and froing between acknowledging race as an important dividing line in our society, which they say in, well, they, they say they're going to a policy conference soon, so the policies are still quite thin, but they say they acknowledge race. But then they also say that they are walking away from BEE and affirmative action. 
And Mr. Mashaba wrote an article in the Sunday Times disavowing BEE. And I'm not quite sure how one squares that circle where you acknowledge race on the one hand, but you want to get rid of the policy platform which foregrounds race on the other. And I think that's perhaps evidence of some of the incoherence, maybe donor pressurized on this platform. Is Action SA different from the, D, uh, the DA on questions of race or isn't it? And, and I'm not quite sure myself. Uh, look, uh, I went to, to an interview uh, about the state of the nation very recently. And I was asked this question, I was interviewed after Herman Mashab, and Herman Mashab had rejected PE, and I was asked whether I also reject, like him, do I reject PE. I have a very different view on this issue. And uh, just to underline my point of departure, my point of departure is, is that at this moment in South Africa, you need intellectuals to lead. In other words, HNSA must have a paradigm, they must have a political philosophy, then, then what they are saying will be consistent over time. In South Africa, let's say, okay, let me take it where I, I come from. Let's look at France. France is something we studied at school, uh, the 1789 uh, French Revolution and so on. But in that revolution, there was the question of equality. It was a big qu question, equality, liberty, and fraternity, and so on. Today, when you read the reports by uh, Pickett, Thomas Pickett, if you are born to a poor family in France, it will take you six generations to actually get out of poverty. In 1789, they killed people to eliminate equality, and they were all white. Now, in South Africa, there's the added feature in the inequality in South Africa. There's an added feature in that our inequality was designed by the state to be based on what they call race, our ethnic backgrounds. If you are Tosa, this is what we are going to get. If you are English or white or European, you are going to get this. If you are believed to be from Asia, you are going to get something different. So you cannot run away that it, our inequality, inequality happens in other countries and it is a big problem. But in South Africa, by law, it was designed. And unfortunately today, the right. logic of apartheid and colonialism is still operating in the economy of South Africa and reproducing across generations right. inequality on a racial basis. Okay. So BEE, to me, it doesn't matter. You could find a new word, but right. the actual word is inequality of wealth, right. I'm inequality of income, and inequality of opportunity. Right. No, so uh, inequality, the word B, up to us to the discussion. You can choose the new word. Have to leave it there. Right. Absolutely. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. This is a much deeper conversation, which hopefully we'll have together at some point. But we've run out of time. I'd like to thank our guests, Mr. Kaluza and Ms. Mlapotao, for sharing their perspectives. You too, Mr. Swana. Thank you very much for joining us for another installment of Unfiltered, and we look forward to joining you on the next show. Good evening.